King Biden, that's what we got to call him now, because he's the one who controls it all, controls all the money, apparently. So much for Congress. Hey, Joe Biden has the power, apparently, to hand out $400 billion. That's the newest price tag on what this student loan forgiveness plan is going to really cost. And the lawsuits have already begun. We're going to talk about all of it. Plus, oh, it's not your fault you're in debt, and it's not your fault if you're overweight. The Biden administration is, for the first time since the late 1960s, going to convene a big conference on obesity. Obesity. So what do we do about it? Well, we're going to get into all the numbers and what he's doing. And finally, I just want to say hooray here for NASA. Really good news that apparently now we can uh, take out an asteroid so we don't go the way of the dinosaurs. I'm actually personally very happy to hear that. I hope you are too. Welcome to the program. I am Trish Regan. This is the Trish Regan Show. Portions of today's program are brought to you by Legacy Precious Metals. There's never been a better time to invest in precious metals for the long term. So go to LegacyPMInvestments.com for your free investing guide today. Again, that's LegacyPMInvestments.com. All right, starting here on this conservative group that is suing the Biden administration over this student loan forgiveness plan because $400 $400 billion, that's the latest billion with a B. That's the latest estimate from the Congressional Budget Office, the CBO. And taxpayers are going to have to shoulder that burden. Now the administration will say, no, 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 we can work it out. You know, we're actually going to have debt reduction in the future. But it, frankly, in terms of the here and now, the money's got to come from somewhere, right? And this is what has people so concerned. Look, the power of the purse is a pretty important power. And there's a reason why we have checks and balances. There's a reason why our government was set up the way it is set up. And it was to avoid having one person decide the economic fate of everybody else. In this case, however, you have one person, the President of the United States and his education department, deciding that they're going to forgive and forget, in some cases, $20,000 in student loans. In other cases, $10,000. How do they have the ability to do that? Well, they're trying to use some emergency clauses. Emergency clauses, even though, if you listen to the president, this whole pandemic is supposed to be over, right? But the pandemic is over. If you notice, no one's wearing masks. Everybody seems to be in pretty good shape. It can't be over if... You need to issue more money, which is what he's trying to do. Well, I do anticipate that this will be met with an enormous amount of resistance, both politically and, of course, legally, because people don't like the idea of having to pay for the educations of people that um, are obligated to pay for it themselves, right? They signed on the dotted line, and in some cases, you have people who couldn't go to college or who couldn't afford to go to college because they were working so many jobs, maybe with the aspiration of someday going, and now they have to pay via their own taxes, it's not really going to fly. But our spending trajectory overall is not going to fly. It's one of the reasons why I keep saying you want to make sure that you have a diversified portfolio with asset allocation into different vehicles. One of those vehicles is gold because over time, historically, we've seen that gold has really hung on to its value. Because when things get really crazy and you're worried about Vladimir Putin doing who knows what and you're worried about Taiwan and China, that's when you want something like gold in your portfolio to help even out that volatility and to help protect you for the future. I have a lot of concerns about our economy right now. It's one of the reasons why I am going to hold, by the way, a private town hall in the coming weeks just for you, just for fans of this program. And you can get more information if you go to my website, trishintel.com. Sign up for my email there. We'll be sending an email invite to all of you to join this town hall and we can talk together about the state of our economy. It will be live. You can speak with me directly. So more on that in the coming days. But mark your calendar because we're looking we're looking at October 12th around 2 p.m. So more on that coming up. It will be brought to you by Legacy Precious Metals. Again, the company I trust for investing in gold. LegacyPMInvestments.com is their website. You can call them at one 589 one 589 Again, go to LegacyPMInvestments.com for more. 
all this spending really is indicative of a viewpoint that people cannot take care of themselves. And that is so much of what we've heard from the Democrat Party, more so and more so over the years. In fact, I would argue that right now we've reached a kind of climatic state in which it will progressively get even more bombastic because of the treacherous economic environment we are finding ourselves in. You saw data today that showed that home prices are now declining. So there's an expected recession within the housing sector. Jerome Powell, even from the Federal Reserve, admitting this just the other day, they're not going to be able to fix all this. Of course, these are the guys, frankly, that started it all to begin with. They've got to do something. And what that something means is draining money out of the economy. And when they drain that money out of the economy, it's going to get harder and harder for average Americans who are already struggling. We've seen debt levels increase to a level that's really unprecedented among middle Americans. So the majority of Americans are, are facing more challenging times. And somehow the answer is always to just reward people with more handouts. I frankly don't think that's the way to go. I think the reason we're in the position we're now in, the reason our economy is going to be stumbling so badly is because we gave out too much money for way too long. And this is why I've been sounding the alarm for well over a year. I mean, you go back to summer of 2020 and I said this will not work. I was right. Well, it, it's it's just the way they do things. And I'm obviously more critical of the Democrats right now in the Biden administration for doing this. but. Let's be clear. I mean, I think all politicians love the idea of being able to buy votes. And so they're all out there wanting to buy more and more votes and never wanting the individuals to have the accountability themselves. And you have only to look now at this new effort to deal with America's massively increasing obesity rates, which is frankly a full-blown crisis right now. I mean, this is sad stuff because the U.S., Obesity rate now among adults is 42.4%. That's the highest it has ever been. If you go all the way back to 1970, you know only 15% of adults were struggling with obesity in 1970. So now you're up over 40%. I mean, at this kind of rate, you're going to have many, many, many more problems. What else is sad is you have rates of childhood obesity that are increasing in the latest data. 19.3% of U.S. young people are struggling with obesity between the ages of 2 and 19. That compares to 5.5% of young people that had it back in, in the mid-1970s. We, we seem to be eating a whole lot more and there's no accountability for any of it. If anything, it's the opposite, right? Because the models now are celebrating this and and look, don't get me wrong, like uh, people come in all shapes and sizes and I think we need to be appreciative of everyone. But we also need to have a certain expectation that people are going to try, try to take care of themselves. And hopefully, I don't have a lot of faith, but hopefully the White House will be getting at some of this in this summit that they're looking to have. Again, the first one since 1969. The first one since 1969. After 69, you saw a big increase in food welfare programs, including food stamps, which we still have a plentiful amount of today, as well as women, infants, and children's program, the WIC program, food security, and yet everybody's still talking about food insecurity. So we got food insecurity plus a challenging obesity epidemic. And so if you ask me, someone's not doing something right here. This spending has most likely gone in all the wrong places. And it's not as though we're encouraging people to buy fruits and vegetables and healthy things. Walmart, go into any Walmart in America and you see giant sized junk everywhere. And somebody's gonna be honest about it. I mean, really honest about it. And there is such an effort to sort of stamp out that because somehow it's seen as prejudice or somehow it's seen as cruel and it's a hard thing. I, I know uh, I, I gained a lot of weight when I had my own two children and, and then the third, and it's a hard thing to have to lose that. But much like when you're putting yourself on a financial diet, if you're putting yourself 
on a diet for your health, you got to get control of this. And as a nation, we've got to get control of this. My fear, of course, is that no one will get control of it. They'll do exactly what they did before, whether it be the Federal Reserve printing more money or whether it be Joe Biden saying, no, no, people just need more money for food stamps um, and, and then they can buy more chips and soda. It's tough. And I think that we've got to have some real and very honest conversations. I wanted to leave you with a little bit of good news because I am encouraged by NASA, really, really encouraged about this DART program. They were able to actually just go up into the sky, take out an asteroid, and, well, not take it out, but divert its course. They diverted the course of an asteroid in the air. This is kind of valuable, important stuff. I mean, this is why we have science, right? We want to be able to protect our world. We want to be able to make sure that the earth is safe in the future. And NASA's ability to do that, I think is pretty darn exciting, especially given that if you've watched that movie, was it with Taya Leone? She did a movie back in the late nineties and it, it was called, oh, here we go. I wrote it down for you. <laughs> it was called Deep Impact. Came out in 1998. And I saw it years later, but that'll freak you out. Trust me, that'll completely, totally freak you out. And you will want to make sure that that DART program is in effect. And you kind of wonder why it hasn't been in effect earlier. But sometimes, sometimes our scientists learn great things from Hollywood now and then, right? Um, if you haven't noticed, I'm back in the studio uh, as opposed to the library today, back here with all the bells and whistles. It's good to see you all here. If you're listening on Apple iTunes, I encourage you to go follow me over on Rumble on my Rumble channel or on YouTube. And if you're there on YouTube or Rumble, please, please go and download the full version of this. Subscribe to it on Apple iTunes and get the full podcast there as well as Spotify. And I'll be back with you tomorrow. We'll talk a little bit more about the direction of our economy, but I think it's quite fair to say we should all be bracing for some uh, pretty deep impact here ourselves because at some point you have to pay the price. You have to recognize the consequences of irresponsible policy. That's where we are right now. I'll see you tomorrow.